Well, Argentina has elected a libertarian president, Javier Malay. This is the first time a libertarian has ever been elected to any government's head of state. And libertarians are basically hoping this guy doesn't mess things up. <laughs> so first, let's go over who this newly elected president is, what his political ideology of anarcho-capitalism is, and also some of the controversy surrounding some of his statements that uh, lead many to think that he is a WEF globalist puppet. So here he is, Javier Malay. He's 53 years old, so he's a fairly young guy. Uh, <laughs> he's quite the character. So he's very much like a, you know, he's being likened to Donald Trump. I would say uh, Zelensky had a very similar, uh, similar campaign. I'm an outsider. I'm different. Big personality. Zelensky had his acting and comedy career. Uh, people are saying he's kind of like a Boris Johnson. So he well, certainly with the hair style there, he's kind of similar. So just kind of an unkempt outsider who comes in, although Boris Johnson is not really an outsider, but he's got that Trumpian, you know, people think he's kind of Trumpian, but uh, Z I'd say definitely Zelensky, Trump and uh, Javier Malay are very similar. And that's what he, who he's being compared to. This is a tweet by Colin Rugg. I think this kind of sums up uh, the new president decently it says meet Argentina's new president Javier Malay when he was growing up kids called him the madman because of his energetic outbursts at the age of 18 Malay who was a soccer player gave up the sport to pursue a career in economics Malay uh, started getting famous for debates on live television where he would hurl insults at his rivals along with his madman energy after a 2018 incident where Malay called a journalist a donkey a local court ordered a psychological exam after he refused to apologize for gender violence. Malay hates wokeism. He hates socialism. He hates the media. He hates excessive government spending. He hates the political elite. And he loves his country. Legend is what Colin Rugg says. Um, watch this video. Actually, what I'm going to do, we're going to kind of lower the volume of it. And I'm going to read what he's saying while he's saying it. Because, of course, he's speaking Spanish, so I'm going to translate it for you. But I want you to watch this video where he is talking about who he calls shit leftards. Here's the video. So he says you can't give shit leftards an inch. Let's play his volume a little bit. You can define shit leftists, she asks. All collectivists, all kinds of collectivists. But why do you call them shit? Because they are. Because they are shit. If you think differently from them, they will kill you. This is the point. You can't give shit leftists an inch, he says. If you give them an inch, they will use it to destroy you. You can't negotiate with leftards. You don't negotiate with trash because they will end you. <laughs> if, if they, the left, have a guy that beats his wife off, if it's one of them, he puts on the green scarf pro abortion and yells about neoliberalism all the time and they hide it. So, the double standard. If suddenly there's a journalist that molests another journalist, they hide it. When it's one of them, they hide it. So he's really going hard against. So they hide all of their aberrations. Now, if you're on the other side, they will ruin you. They'll kill you. Wow. They will throw you everything. They don't care if they ruin your whole life. Why? Only because you don't think like them. And do you know what's the good part in all of this? Because it, uh, since it's air to be human, since everyone can be mistaken, they force us to be better. And since we're all, uh, since we are getting better, and since we're crushing them in the cultural battle, we're not only superior economically, so he's talking about conservatives, we are morally superior. We are aesthetically superior. We are better than them at everything, and that triggers them. 
Okay, so this gives you a taste of who this guy is. <laughs> he's quite the character, and he's quite, um, you know, he, he's a very, uh, he really hates liberals. He hates leftists. So uh, a, a little bit about his background. He's 53, born to a housewife and a bus driver. They're of Italian origin. For over 21 years, he's been a professor of macroeconomics, economics of growth, microeconomics, and mathematics for economics. So he's a professor. He also uh, worked on, he also became the chief economist at a private pension company, a head economist of a financial advising company, and a government consultant. He's also a member of the B20, the Economic Policy Group of the International Chamber of Commerce. Uh, he's also an advisor to G20 and the, or, or B20 is an advisor to G20. And he's also with the economic, uh, the World Economic Forum. So he's the author of several books. He was the most interviewed econom uh, economist on TV. And he hosts his own radio show called Demolishing Myths. So what is anarcho-capitalism? Uh, so he's a libertarian. He's an extreme libertarian. This is the first time a libertarian has been elected to government. So libertarians are hailing this guy. They're hoping. I've been seeing all over social media, all the libertarians saying, please don't screw up. Please don't mess up. Show the world what libertarian policies are like. I'm quite curious myself because we've never seen this done. And I, it's hard to wrap my mind. For me personally, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around how exactly this would work, how well it would work. Let me tell you why. An anarcho-capitalist is somebody who hates government. Uh, that's what the anarchy part is. Really wants to see the destruction of state, just hates statism. But they are pro-capitalist, which means they want to capitalize and privatize everything. So an, an, an anarcho-capitalist does believe in the privatization of everything, and that includes policing that includes courts, and that includes even the law. They would be happy to privatize all of it. And they say in their arguments that a lot of it is already privatized. They say many, many companies, many places already hire private security. So security is already privatized. They say the courts are already privatized. When you are hired by a company or when you negotiate a deal, oftentimes there's an arbitration clause in it, meaning you don't go to the government courts, you instead have to hire a private arbitrator and you work it out with the arbitration. So that would be the privatization of courts. They also say that laws are also privatized. Companies will have their own rules and regulations, like what we see with social media, like what we see with credit card companies. And so much of this is already privatized. And so anarcho-capitalists want all of it privatized. They just think that there should just be, we should just abolish everything that the government runs and instead allow everything to be privatized. Now, of course, many of us would say, like, I personally cannot afford private security. I have to rely on calling the police if something were to happen to me and hope that they get here in time. Would they get here in time? Probably not as fast as if I had my own bodyguard following me around all over the place. But... <laughs> Uh, that's I, who can afford that kind of salary and that kind of, that kind of security. So that, so people who can't afford private security, companies that can't afford private security just would go without policing. Same thing with the courts. Um, a lot of, a lot of companies and a lot of people don't want to go to private arbitrators. They feel like a crime has been committed and they want to go to an actual court. They want to arbitrate or they want, a, they want their court case to be taken to a jury rather than through private arbitration with an arbitrator. Um, laws, can we count on social media to make the right laws? Or laws that instead uh, shepherd us to the group think that they want us to be shepherded into. So there's a lot of, rather than you know forcing, for example, um, certain laws that protect certain groups of people that, that protect, many people would like to see even more laws enacted in order to ensure certain basic principles of society like free speech, rather than having that just be for government and government interference, but be for everything and everyone. Some people would like to see that extended to private institutions and not just public institutions. So there is sort of this, um, there's one group that would like to see more laws. There's this group, the anarcho-capitalists, that would like to see fewer laws and certainly fewer government agencies. Now, many people would say a lot of government agencies are certainly wasteful, but to get rid of policing, to get rid of courts, to get rid of firefighters, 
to get rid of all of these other these other inst- education, healthcare, all of these institutions that are helpful for the people who are not the wealthy elites in society. I want you to watch this video. This is um, this is him showcasing his plans for the government, how he wants to abolish a lot of different uh, government agencies in Argentina. Watch this. Afuera. Ministerio de Cultura. Afuera. Ministerio de Ambiente y Desarrollo Sostenible. Afuera. Ministerio de las Mujeres y Género y Diversidad. Afuera. Ministerio de Obras Públicas. Afuera. Aunque te resistas. Ministerio de Ciencia y Tecnología <risa> e Innovación. Afuera. Ministerio de Trabajo, Empleo y Seguridad Social. Afuera. Ministerio de Educación. Adoctrinamiento. Afuera. Ministerio de Transporte. Afuera. Ministerio de Salud. Afuera. Ministerio de Desarrollo Social. Afuera. Se acabó el curro de la política. ¡Viva la libertad, carajo! Okay, so he wants to get rid of every single government agency, even the department education, uh, transportation, everything. So, he was, so privatization of everything. So imagine right now you can get on a city bus if you need to go somewhere. If your car breaks down, you can you can ride a city bus, not under anarcho capitalists or just extreme libertarians. Um, and and actually, a lot of these policies of anarcho capitalists are mainstream libertarian. It's just that. Some libertarians, you know, they're an interesting group because they all have their limits and they don't seem to fit into one bucket, just like any other group, just like liberals, just like conservatives. There's a variety. There's a variety of conservatives. We see them infighting all the time. There's a variety of Democrats. We see the infighting all the time. And there's also a variety of libertarians. And they also have their own infighting. It's just that they haven't really had any power in order for anybody to really showcase that. It's usually within the right wing where they start, where they battle it out with other conservatives. But within the libertarian movement, there's also lines that libertarians have. And some people don't even call him a full-on libertarian because of some of his policies. For example, he is against abortion. He does not. Now, most libertarians say, hands off, you live your life, you do what you want to do. That's all up to you. And he says, no, he wants to completely um, get rid of abortion, even in the cases of rape and incest. He thinks that that needs to, we, that it doesn't matter. He, um, so there's, so there's that he's also really pro what it looks like to be for American foreign wars, American foreign policy, which is also not a typical libertarian stance. Libertarians tend to be more, um, isolationist. Let's just focus on ourselves. Don't worry about other people. Some things that really Pique the interest of a lot of people and why he's gaining a lot of support and why he's going viral here in the United States is he does align with a lot of the conservative faction in the country that would love to see these policies in play. And now they kind of get their chance with this guy in in office in Argentina. He's proposed the uh, the abolition of the Central Bank of Argentina. Now, many people would love to see the Central Bank of the United States end. But though he does call for something similar, it would ultimately uh, result in a de facto dollarized economy. So they would end up just defaulting to the dollar. That is very different if we got rid of the Central Bank of the United States. Uh, so so it's a little bit different when he calls for the, the Central Bank of Argentina to be abolished. He's really calling for a dollarized economy of Argentina. He's also pledged not to raise taxes. He's also donated his own salary uh, to a monthly raffle. He doesn't need the money, he says. He strongly opposes abortion. I mentioned that even in the case of rape. He's he's um, he's actually suggested a referendum to reconsider the 2020 law, which is the voluntary interruption of pregnancy bill that legalized it. So he wants to make it illegal. He supports uh, freedom of choice, though, on other topics like drugs, prostitution, marriage, sexual preference and gender identity. Uh, he criticizes comprehensive sex education in schools and says that it's a form of brainwashing. He expressed skepticism towards the COVID-19 vaccines, though he did get the vaccine. He just is against mandated vaccines, and he also was uh, skeptical of how quickly they were pumped out to the public. He does support uh, civ- civilian firearm ownership, or what we call the Second Amendment here in the United States. And he does, um, where he gets controversial is when it comes to the sale of human organs and even children. Um, he has been... Uh, not exactly clear on his stance on selling kids. Um, so, you know, an anarcho-capitalist thinks that there should be no laws, no regulation 
although he, he opposes abortion. So he clearly, and he says the reason why he opposes abortion is because he's also against murder. So you can't, so there would be some laws in his anarcho-capitalist world. It wouldn't be completely privatized. Um, so he would be, I, it sounds to me that he would still keep murder as an illegal act. He categorizes abortion as murder, so that's why it would be an illegal act. Um, however, when it comes to selling, like, your body, that's why he says prostitution, it's okay, and selling your own organs is okay, and apparently selling children. Although he's now clarified that stance and said, no, okay, I don't know if I really agree with selling children. He's just been a little bit vague on that one, and that's a little bit... Strange for people and suspects. Certainly, I don't think you should be able to sell a child. Um, here is some of the, the controversy. I want to show you some of these. Here's a tweet. This is Ben Norton. He wrote, and now Ben Norton's on the left. So, of course, anybody on the left is not going to like this guy because this guy is uh, a far, you know, he's on the right. He's libertarian, anarcho-capitalist. So if you're on the left, you're going to hate this guy naturally, normally. But here's Ben Norton. He writes, far-right extremist Javier Malay won Argentina's presidential election. Malay wants to legalize the sale of children and human organs. Somewhat true. I mean, he's been vague on the sale of children. It's, it's true on human organs. Abolish public health care. That's true. Education, true. He wants to abolish that. And abolish transportation. That's true. He wants to get rid of city buses and city transport. Um, he wants to abandon monetary sovereignty. That's true because if Argentina gets rid of the central bank, then it would de facto dollarize their economy, so getting rid of Argentina's monetary sovereignty, and he wants to adopt the U.S. dollar. It's more de facto. I don't know if he specifically wants to adopt the U.S. dollar. He is definitely pro-U.S. He has made that very, very clear. Um, I, I'm not 100% certain if he says outright, I want to get, I want to adopt the U.S. dollar, or if it's just de facto because he wants to get rid of the central bank of Argentina. And he says his dead dog uh, speaks to him from the afterlife and advises him on economic policy. So he is a big dog lover and has said some pretty wild and outlandish things. Um, he uh, Here's another tweet. This one is from uh, Eli David. Uh, so he is a big proponent of Israel. Dr. Eli David is uh, very big on Twitter for his pro-Israel posts, some of them very controversial. And he wrote, huge congratulations to Jay Millay, for winning the elections and becoming the new president of Argentina. Just three days ago, he waved the Israel flag in a rally. So there he is waving the flag. So this has caused a lot of people to have some red flags about him. Also wondering, you know, is he going to march Argentina into endless wars in the same way that the United States has? And he actually said that his first trip when he becomes president would be to Israel. Watch this. Johnny lo sabe. Pero una de las cosas que yo propuse, digo, además de alinearme con Israel y con Estados Unidos, mm. una de las cosas que yo dije es, yo quiero mudar la embajada desde Tel Aviv a Jerusalén. A Jerusalén. A Jerusalén. Y los que sabemos de qué se trata eso, sabemos lo que implica. Es un lío geopolítico sí. importante. Importante. So he's Está saying bien, there he wants to la... move the embassy of Israel to, claro, ¿no? to claro. Jerusalem bueno, from sí, Tel Aviv, sí, which, is like, momento, which is what Donald Trump did. Algo. Sí. Si soy presidente, mi primer viaje es a Israel. Sí, creo que te lo había escuchado. Antes que a Washington, antes sí. que ir a ver al fondo. El fondo es otra cosa. El fondo, digamos, es una cuestión, digamos, claro. vinculada a la, a la economía. No, no, no. Es una Primero, cuestión política. Viaje... Como simbólico querés ir a Israel. Ok. Sí, exacto. Eh... Digo, ya que me hicieron 357 mil operaciones por las cuales no me pude dar el gusto de ir al Cotel, eh, al muro. El muro, el muro de los lamentos. ¿Me comprendés? O sea, por lo menos. Digo, digo, siendo presidente no me vas a molestar. Me voy a ir eh, yo te y vi. nadie me va a operar. ¿Te puedo decir algo? Okay, so he's saying his first trip is going to be to Israel, and they said even before America, and he says, yeah, even before America. Um, here is another tweet um, from War Clandestine saying, there is a chunk of truthers who are upset about Malay winning because they think he is a WEF Zionist plant that tricked Argentinians into voting for him. If this is the case, then nothing has changed except Malay red-pilled millions around the world first. It's a net gain either way. Just because he might not share your exact viewpoint about Ukraine or the Middle East doesn't mean it's the end of the world. The man recognizes that a deep state exists, that leftism slash socialism is poison, and that the less government, the better. He might not be perfect, 
but he sees the root of the problem and he's not afraid to tell you about it. This makes him better than 99.99% of politicians to ever walk this earth. If he turns out to be a deep state sleeper agent, highly improbable, then we adjust our assessment as the situation develops. Until then, I'm enjoying the win and enjoying the red pills. Malay is dishing out. Okay. Um, I Look, right. Whether he is or he isn't, I suppose it won't make much of a difference to Argentina. It is interesting. The people of Argentina, when they were interviewed about this, there's been a lot of on the street asking Argentinians why they voted for this guy. And a lot of them just said, look, he's different. What we were going with is going nowhere. And so we might as well just try something different. And this guy certainly does have a radical, a different viewpoint of how the government should be run in Argentina. It'll be interesting if he accomplishes it, what happens to that economy. I'm interested in this experiment, mostly because it's not happening in my country. I would like to see it happen somewhere else to see how it goes. And then maybe that would actually, if it goes well, a lot of libertarians here in this country are hoping then that they would get their shot at running government, that it would be a boon to libertarianism. It could go either way. I'm interested in seeing how this goes. I do want to point out though, when it comes to this guys, he does remind me a lot of Zelensky. And when you remember when Zelensky was running for president of Ukraine. He was outlandish. He was a comedian. He, there were videos of him dancing in women's clothing, um, being very comedic, outlandish, and out there. And the reason why people in Ukraine voted for Zelensky was for the same reason. He was different. He was an outsider, and they liked that. And when Zelensky ran for president, he was pro-West. He said it. I'm pro-West. But people didn't believe that he would become a puppet for the West. That wasn't what anyone in Ukraine believed. In fact, the Russian-speaking Ukrainians saw him as hope. They believed that Zelensky would bring peace to the Russian-speaking pop Russian population in Ukraine. Russia viewed him as a, a potential person that they could make peace with. Zelensky said while he was running for president that he wanted to make peace with the, with the civil war. He wanted to end that civil war, negotiate with the Donbass region, gain peace with them. And we saw the end result in that. Zelensky was ultimately got in there and could not enact any of the policies that he ran for president on. He instead got co-opted quickly and an agenda was had and he became the puppet to that agenda. So there's a real possibility that uh, that Malay is similar in that way because he, he does have similar, he says similar things. He has similar support for the West and similar ties to the West. And he's an outsider and... More so, though, with this, with, uh, with Javier Malays, he's more embedded with the establishment than Zelensky was before Zelensky became president. Zelensky quickly became uh, part of that establishment or co-opted by that establishment or bribed into it or who knows what caused Zelensky to shift and go along with all of the West plans, even, if though, even though they were very detrimental to his country. It's unclear, but this guy is already embedded in with the WEF already embedded in with U.S. foreign policy. And really, this is music to the U.S.'s ears to hear that he's going to privatize everything in Argentina. You can imagine there's going to be a lot of U.S. companies swooping in trying to make big bucks off of this. So we'll see. I'm excited. <laughs> More power to him. I only wish the best for the Argentinian people, and I, I hope he works out uh, to, their, to their favor and, and benefits them. I would only hope for a people to thrive. And so I hope that this works out. And I'm interested to see this experiment. I'm interested to see how it goes. Mm. <laughs> All right, guys, let me tell you about some incredible skincare products for both men and women, GenuCell. GenuCell is an amazing skincare line formulated by a pharmacist who started off just making his cream for locals until it blew up in, prop in popularity. And now you can have the same luxury skincare, and it's for both men and women. Yes, guys, we know you care about your skin, too. Don't be shy. Their most popular package, which you can get for over 70% off, includes a variety of products to help defy aging and get you looking your best this holiday season. So in the package, you're going to get a product to reduce the appearance of under-eye bags and puffiness. You'll also get the dark spot corrector to instantly diminish the appearance of age spots and acne scarring. You're also going to get an amazing anti-wrinkle cream, which is my personal favorite because it delivers maximum hydration, leaving the skin with fewer wrinkles and just looking healthier. I use that one at night. It's that little yellow jar there. 
You'll also receive the immediate effects and jawline treatment, which give immediate skin tightening around the eyes and firms up the jawline. And here's the GenuCell amazing guarantee. You'll see results day one or your money back. So take advantage of the GenuCell most popular package, all at about 70% off by going to GenuCell.com slash Kim to get your discount.